All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday or good evening or afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, we'll get started in just a few minutes here. But uh, first thing I'd like you to do is just in the chat, tell me what city, state or country you're joining us from uh, today. And that'll just let me know that everything's working OK, uh, that the live is going. So just, yeah, let us, let us know in the chat there. And like I said, we'll get started in just a few minutes here. We're going to be talking all about the Excel challenge we presented a few weeks ago on license plates. We're going to be looking at formula solutions, uh, power query solutions, VBA solutions. So a lot of different uh, learning opportunities here for a pretty cool challenge. Uh, definitely a little bit more advanced challenge for sure, but I'll talk about that and, uh, and skill levels and things like that here. So again, if you're just joining up, let me just make sure everything is going. Yeah. All right. I think we are going. Good, good. We had a little bit of trouble last time, so it uh, looks like everything's working working this time. Cool. Okay. Yep. I see. I see some people in the chat. There we go. A little delay there, but all good. Samuel from Liberia. Samuel, welcome. Sham from Toronto. Hey, Ron. Good to see you, Ron. Ron from Nashville is here. Uh, Richard from New Jersey, Flemington, New Jersey. Uh, Luis from Chicago. Welcome. So yeah, thanks for joining us again. If you're just joining us now. Uh, in the chat there, you can tell us where you're joining us from. I won't get through all the names or anything like that today. But of course, I'll have questions for you too. And if you have any questions for us during this session, uh, feel free to put those in the chat. So feel free to put those there and I'll do my best to answer any questions that come up around uh, this challenge. Because it was, like I said, it was a pretty advanced challenge, I would say, uh, with some great solutions. So thank you if you posted solutions. Thanks to everyone in the community for posting solutions. Uh, it was really cool to see all these different techniques and ways to solve this challenge. Okay, cool. I see it's working now. All right. Uh, hey, Melanie. I see Zara is here. Awesome. Alicia, Marlene, Keithan, Dan. All right. We got a ton of people here. Good to see y'all. Chris, welcome. Robert, Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, Dalip, awesome. Dan, good to see you all. Cool. So like I said, I won't be able to go through everyone, but uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, today, we'll get started in just a minute here. Uh, in the description of this training, or I'm sorry, of this video, I put the link where you can download this file to follow along. So if you haven't done that already, and I actually just updated it about 10, 15 minutes ago or so. So if you downloaded it earlier, um, you might want to download it again. I just added a few uh, tabs in here. And so you can download and, and follow along. Or if you haven't tried the challenge yet, you can also try it as well and take the, take the challenge on. It's a good challenge um, for sure. So yeah, and also let us know in the uh, in the chat too if you did try the challenge and what you thought about it. Uh, if you thought it was difficult, fun, easy, um, probably we'll get answers all across the board there. I know some people probably thought this was easy. Some people thought this was really difficult, um, but I think it was a good challenge. And, and I'll talk about kind of some techniques here that can be used in other scenarios, not just analyzing license plates, but other scenarios, maybe more real world scenarios. Although. This is a very real world scenario for uh, Yellowstone National Park, and, and we'll talk a bit about that. Cool. All right. So it's nine o'clock. Let's get started. OK, so on today's agenda, again, we're going to be talking about the solutions for the license plate challenge that I presented a few weeks ago. And I'll talk about what that challenge is uh, in terms of who the training is for. Like I said, this is probably definitely an advanced solution, but I would say still, even if you're a beginner or new to Excel, you're going to pick up some tips here. So still hang out, follow along. You can download the file and there's a description. Uh, I'm sorry, there's a link in the description below where you can download the file uh, and follow along. And that's the same file I'm working on here. Uh, and so, okay, so let me just quickly recap what the challenge was. If you're not familiar with it, if you haven't taken the challenge, uh, a few weeks ago, or actually in June, I was on vacation uh, in Yellowstone National Park with my family. And they experienced some major flooding. The park experienced some major flooding uh, earlier in the month, and they had to close the park down. And then in order to reopen it, they had to limit the number of people that could be that could come into the park, that could enter the park. And they did that through license plates. They have this system called alternating license plate system that the national parks use. And they implemented this system. And you can see it on my screen here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. Uh, but essentially, this is the system here where they just look at the license plate of your car. If it ends in an odd number, then you can come into the park on an odd number day. If it ends in an even number, you can come into the park on an even number day. And then if you have a personalized plate or the plate doesn't end in a number, uh, then there's rules for that as well, which you can see here. Uh, you have to find the last number in the plate 
and that determines and if that's even or odd that determines which day you get to come in on so uh fairly challenging to do this in excel but as soon as i th saw this we entered the park on uh june 24th our license plate ends in eight so those are both even numbers uh and they give us this flyer and you can see it in the the screenshot here uh this flyer when we entered and as soon as i saw this uh, i thought this would be a great thing to solve in excel right a great challenge or a great thing to solve in excel uh and so that's exactly what we presented. So I have this list here of plate numbers that I just made up, just random plate numbers. And then the challenge was to write a formula to determine if it's an even or odd number based on these rules. And that would determine if you could go into the park on an odd or even numbered day. And that's the date of the month. So like I said, June 24th, when we went, that's an even number. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I see everyone from just joining the chat saying hi. Great to see you all. Thank you. Uh, thanks everybody. Uh, cool. Okay. So really with this challenge, we had a lot of different, uh, solutions submitted, which was awesome. It was cool to see all of your different techniques for solving this. Uh, and if you want to check those out, I'm going to go through a lot of them today. I won't be able to go through all of them. Um, but you can check those out on the comments of this YouTube video that I presented. There's a lot of, uh, solutions there as, as well as the blog post, the original blog post. And there's a link in the description below to those. Uh, as well. Uh, but really, it came down to what I saw was like two main strategies. Oh, and let me make my screen a little bigger here. Sorry about that. There we go. I'll make things a little bigger. Uh, it came down to really two main strategies. And also zoom in on this. That looks a little better. There we go. Uh, for solving this. So two, really two techniques, I would say. The first is to search for the last number in the string. And when I say string, that just means this uh, value or this sequence of text and numbers. And programming and VBA might call that a string. Uh, so that's what I mean by string. But essentially, the license plate to just search for the last number and then determine if that's even or odd. And that, again, determines if you can come into the park on a specific day. So that was one technique. And we'll look at different uh, ways to solve it using that technique, because there's still a lot of ways to solve that. Another technique I saw, and this is one I did not think of, uh, was to remove all the letters in the string, which converts and convert it to a number. So essentially, once you remove all the letters, like in this case here, you remove K, L, and C, then this just becomes a number. And even if there is a, I should have shown this here, but let's say instead of uh, four, you know, this was, let's say this was an H, right? And then this uh, would we, you would take that out and this would just become seven, six, nine. Uh, so that's like, that's really kind of how this would work. So I'll do all the formatting there, but that essentially you take out all the letters, no matter where they're at in the string that reduces it down. You combine those or put them together really, uh, or join them to create a number. And if the, that, whatever the last digit of that number is, is going to determine whether it's even or odd. So therefore, that's in, in this case, it's not a number. Uh, so that's another way to solve this. Very cool way to solve this as well. OK, so I'm going to first go through kind of my initial solution here. This was a very common one, I would say. Uh, so I'll go through that solution, which was, again, if we jump back to the strategies real quick, that was the search method, kind of the first method, search or lookup method to find this last uh, character. So we'll go through that one first. And again, I'll zoom in here for you. And so this, again, it's when I show the formula here, it's it's not going to look easy by any means. Uh, this is not an easy challenge, but I'll, I'm going to break it down uh, and kind of talk about all the different functions here that are used uh, within. So first of all, we really have at the core of this and a lot of these search techniques, the mid function is used. Uh, and really what the mid function does, I'll just you quickly go through this. The mid function, I should step back there. It's going to, I hope it's not too hard for you to see uh, the screen tip here, but it just returns characters from the middle of the text or a string. Uh, so the first thing we'll have is the plate number here, and we can just reference that. And then the start number that we want to start at. So really, there's a few ways to think about this, but what we want to do is split this text or this string up into individual characters. Now, we can't really do that with, there's no delimiter between each character. So it kind of makes it a challenge to split the string. 
there's ways to do it and we'll talk about those but in order to split the string it's it's a bit of a challenge there so one way to do this is with the mid function and with the mid function we can just start with one here for the start number and the number of characters would be one and that's just going to return one which is this character here the first character of this if i was to change that start number to two here then we're going to return two which is this second character in the string and that's I don't know, this is probably like kind of a bad example. If that was like a T or something, then that's going to return a T as a second character. So we can use the mid function and combine it. In this case, what I did was I combined it with the sequence function to determine to to like specify an array of numbers that we can then split this string out. So essentially, we're using the mid function to split the string into uh, single characters or digits. So right here where we have the start number, instead of the start number, I use the new sequence function. Now, if you don't have the new, the new uh, dynamic array functions yet, if you're not on the most recent version of Excel, there are other ways to do this, which I'll talk about. Um, but I use the sequence function. So here we just want, uh, for sequence, we want six rows, uh, essentially, or you could do six columns if you want, oops, if you want to split this um, horizontally. And so all that's going to do, all the sequence is going to do is give us a list or an array of numbers one through six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what that is going to do. And then I think I got it all there. Yeah. And so that just splits. You can see now that's going to split all of our characters here into individual cells. So now we can use another function to uh, search or look up the last number in this, uh, the last number. In this case, it's seven, which is odd. Uh, so for that, we then wrap this. Well, there's a few different ways to do it. I use the lookup function. And if you've used VLOOKUP before or XLOOKUP, uh, lookup is another function. And you could use XLOOKUP here as well. Some people used XLOOKUP instead of lookup. Uh, but the lookup function is, is very similar to VLOOKUP. And, but it's going to uh, do a closest match by default. Uh, so what I did was just wrap this in the lookup function. And actually, I actually probably could do this in a separate cell just to make it a little easier to see. So, oops. <laughs> we have the uh, lookup value. So for the lookup value, if you're going through some of these solutions and you're like, why did people put a 10 in here or a nine, a nine or a 10? Uh, that's because what lookup is going to do is it's going to look for, actually a 10 is what you want to put in here. Uh, it's going to look for a 10 across this, string or this array in this case we'll just reference the array here that's going to turn into a spill range uh, reference and then uh, that's actually all we need for that so it's going to look for a 10 if it doesn't find a 10 it's going to find uh, the last number in the sequence it's kind of work back there and find the last number in the sequence uh, that's going to be uh, in this case seven so it doesn't find a 10 it's going to find the closest match by kind of working backwards so it's going to go all the way to the end of the string and say, oh, I didn't never found a 10 because there's not going to be a 10. These are all single digits. So there's never going to be a 10. So that's why we're using 10. Uh, but I'm just going to return the last number that I found there, which in this case is seven. So, oops, I did something wrong there. What did I do wrong? Look up vector, look up array. What did I do there? Oh, right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So one other issue is that these, uh, it doesn't work if there is text. Well, essentially, the mid function is returning text. So all of these are returned as text. So I used the value function to convert that. I think we can just wrap this in value. Yeah. So I use the value function to convert each of those uh, results from mid into text. I'm sorry, into a number, from text to a number. Because mid returns text, a text data type. And we need to make those a number because lookup is looking for a number. Um, so I use the value function. As we'll see, there's other ways to go about that. But essentially, you convert all of those using the value function um, or other techniques to a number. And then it doesn't find 10. So it's going to just go back to the next cell. And this cell could also be smaller. This number could be smaller than the other numbers. It's not really worried about that. It's just saying, if I don't find 10, I'm just going to return the cell um, before the or the last cell, essentially. going to return the last cell. Um, so there we get seven, which is that number. And then the rest of the formula is just using the uh, the is odd function to determine if this number is odd. So down here, I'll just do is odd. So is odd or is even or in this scenario, great functions because 
In this case, we're just specifying the number here and we'll hit enter and that's going to return a true because this number is odd. And you could use is even here to return a false. So depending on what you want to do. Uh, so that was that gives us the true or false for if it's odd. Uh, and then if you want to return the word odd instead, what I have here is just an if statement. So I just said, if this is true, oops, if this is true, oops, <laughs> equals if, open the parentheses, this value is true. And you don't need to actually have like is equals true here because it is already a true at the Boolean value. So you can just say D7, that's going to be odd, else even, just like that. So that's the if statement there. So that's kind of how this is broken up into um, different, the, the different parts of the formula, components of the formula are kind of broken down to so you can see how it, it works and how it's functioning to give us this result. Okay. So I'll just, I'm going to ask if there's any questions like on this before I move forward and feel free to put those in the chat. I'm just going to check out the chat. I see mostly some introductions here. Yeah. If you have any questions on that before I move forward, I'll let me know. I know it's a, a little bit delayed, so I'm just going to wait a few seconds um, to see if there are any questions on this specific technique. Cool. Okay. And while I'm doing that, even if you have questions come up, just put those in the chat. Um, I don't want to stall us too much, but put the, feel free to put those in the chat and I'm happy to explain that further. And like I said be before, you can download the file. There's a link in the description below. If you're joining us late, there's a link in the description where you can download this file and follow along and also analyze these formulas and, and go through them and, um, and see if you do have any questions or just kind of, it's sometimes just easier if you look at them on your own and kind of dissect them. Also talk about the um, the evaluate formula window in a minute as well too. That'll help. Yeah. Okay. So Eric had a question about the uh, the DS uh, pound. This thing or this probably this reference here. Yeah. D five pound. How does that work? And sequence function. Yeah. So great questions. Yeah. Because this is new stuff. And I kind of I I I um I said that very quickly. And I probably should have explained that a little more clearly because not everyone has these new features yet. So this uh, functionality is part of the new dynamic array formulas that were introduced two years ago, three years ago. I, I'm lost on time. <laughs> A few years back, the new dynamic arrays were introduced. And essentially, I think they're available for Excel 2021 and then Office 365 um, is where they're available. So if you don't, if you're not on either of those, if you're on an older version of Excel, you're not going to have this functionality. Um, but what this does is the uh, sequence function in this formula here is going to essentially, like I said, I'll just type it here so you can see it. And we have separate training on this, but it's just good to kind of understand this, especially as part of this technique. If we just put uh, six here for sequence with the sequence function, oops, there we go, six, um, then it's just going to give us a list of numbers, six numbers, one through six. That's what we're getting here inside the mid function. And what I did with sequence was I, instead of using the rows argument, I, I put a comma in front of this and used the columns argument, which is an optional argument, the second argument. And then that just uh, puts it in a horizontal format for the numbers in columns. So this is this is powerful in the, in the new world of Excel uh, because it allows us to create these arrays. They're called arrays, dynamic arrays or lists of numbers and values uh, really in one formula. So before in Excel, in older versions of Excel, we would have to create this, first of all, nothing ever spilled. Like, as you can see, when I entered the formula, we get this spill range here. That never happened before. And even to create a formula like this, you'd have to use control shift enter to enter it as an old array formula. Um, so now in the new world of Excel, we don't have those issues and we can spill out formulas like this. And then we can also use this in this case here, we can use this to pass the array back to the mid function. So essentially what mid is doing is it's running in this case, six times. Uh, we're running it once here and what's happening. And I, let me put it down here just so you can see this a little better. Oops, that changed my reference there. Let's make this, it doesn't really matter, but we'll make this a five. Yeah. So what's happening is mid 
is we're passing in one first to really what this uh, argument here is the start number. And, and we're only returning one character. So we're going to get the first character. And then in mid, you won't see the form. Well, you see the formula in the formula bar up here. It's grayed out. You can't edit the formula here in the spill range. But essentially, we're passing a two onto the, sec the start number of mid. And that's returning T, the second character in this plate number up here. And so on, all the way down. Uh, so that's how that split is working with this dynamic array formula. Now, because we've wrapped all of that inside this function here, or I'm sorry, this formula, and the lookup is only going to return one value, then we're taking that array and just collapsing it back to just, or returning one single value from the array. So you're not going to see the spill range up here. And then uh, in, in terms of Eric's second question, the here where, or where did I reference it? Right here, yeah. Uh, where I have D11 hash, the hashtag after D11, that just allows you to reference the entire spill range. So if the number is larger, uh, or if, the, if we add more numbers to the, let's just add more letters and numbers to the end of this plate like that. Uh, if we add those there, this, well, we, <laughs> I have to, uh, in this sequence function, instead of six, we can return the length. We can use the len function to get the length of A5. And that will give us the total number of characters in A5. And then that makes this more dynamic. So uh, as you can see, if we go back up to this one here, D11 is now referencing all of these cells here in the spill range. D11 hash is what allows you to do that. So you don't have to have something that says D11 to K11 and then go change that as your spill range or the array that's creating that spill range changes in size. So that hash allows you to do that. Yeah. So great questions. I know this is kind of a, this is for, you know, a lot of, for those that are on the latest version of Excel and have been using this for a year or two, you might already be familiar with this, but I would say, you know, probably almost the majority of Excel users might not have this feature yet. Um, so it's great to kind of understand how it works because it makes things a lot easier in Excel. Uh, even just explaining this technique, uh, if I was to do this with the with old version of Excel, and we'll see a technique using the row function for this to create that array, it'd still be harder for me to even explain in the older version of Excel um, because I don't have this nice spill range to kind of show how all the characters are split out. So yeah, it does it makes just makes things easier in a lot of ways. And we have training on um, dynamic arrays, a lot of different training on dynamic arrays, new filter functions, a popular one, unique. Uh, we have a lot of YouTube videos on that as well. So um, yeah, thank you, Eric. That's a great question. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's move on. The other thing I wanted to show was a new feature that was actually just released for the Windows version of Excel. Uh, the Mac version of Excel and the, and the uh, mobile versions of Excel have had this feature for a while, but Windows just got a new feature. And that is uh, the uh, data from picture. So if you go to the data tab, again, you're going to have to be on the latest version of Excel to see this. And I, I'm pretty sure it's on the monthly channel now. Um, I don't think it's on beta. I could be wrong. So I, I think it's on the monthly channel, but uh, don't hold me to that. But anyways, data from picture, we can do picture from file. And then I have some pictures here. This is kind of cool. So I, have, I found these license plates on just a Google search. Um, and we can, so what you could potentially do is take a picture of the plate that's coming into the park and Excel will analyze your image and attempt to find the text in it. Now you can see it kind of found a lot of stuff here. <laughs> and that's because, you know, I took a screenshot and I left the X up there and yeah, it's just kind of all over the place, but it does find the, um, it does find the text for the license plate here. And so we can take that. I think we can, I don't know. I haven't messed with this too much. I'm not sure if we can remove these other boxes because I really only want this in there in in the cell because um, it's going to put that data in in a cell over here. But let's just insert it right here. I'm going to see what happens with this. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So that one wasn't this. It's not perfect by any means, but it's kind of cool that you can take a picture, bring data in, do this all in Excel, and then if we take this value here, I'm just going to copy it and paste it to the bottom of my table right here. This 
uh, value now is going to, uh, the formula is going to run on that. Cause in this table, I have the, that same formula. It's going to run and then uh, determine if it's even or odd. And then I have some conditional formatting applied here uh, to highlight the day. So the current today's date, this is returned, oops, not three. This is returned by the today function, today's current date, which is August 5th. Uh, I have just a simple formula here for if that's odd, then return odd, if not even. And then the conditional formatting will just uh, match this. So if these values match, then it's going to go green. If they don't match, it's going to uh, shade that in orange. And so this is kind of a uh, cool feature. Uh, and Rick asks, is that? Yeah. OK, so Gene, thank you. Uh, Gene said it's not available to all yet. Um, and, and Rick, yes, it is coming to Excel 365. Oh, if if Rick, if you're referring to the like the web version, a lot of people refer to the web or online version of Excel as 365. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it will at some point, um, but I'm not sure. Well, maybe it's, oh, I should know that. It might already be, I don't know if it's already there. Um, it is there in the mobile version of Excel. I was testing this on an iPhone this morning. Um, and again, just kind of taking these plates, uh, these images of, of license plates on um, off of Google and testing it. And it was working for some license plates. I'll, I'll just say this real quickly. I won't go into this too much detail. Like this one here for Florida. Let me open this one up so you can see a little better. Uh, Florida's got a big orange in the middle of the like basically two sequences of digits here. And it didn't do well to find those two. Um, or really anything on this plate. You can see it, it found X filet. <laughs> I don't know where it's finding that in there. Um, so, you know, it, there's a lot going on in this plate. So it didn't work on all plates. So yeah, it's at least not yet. I'm sure this will get better over time. Um, but some of the plates, it worked pretty well on. I think this one from Washington, Washington kind of has a mountain, uh, is that Mount Rainier, I think? Um, yeah, I think <laughs> for anyone that lives in Washington, you can correct me on that. Um, but yeah, so this, it seemed actually in my original test, it worked better than this. Um, and it found, I don't see the plate number in there now. That's interesting. I think it's because, oh yeah, here it is. It's at the beginning, but it didn't really find, eh, it didn't really do a great job there. This one, for whatever reason, well, it might be because I didn't have this stuff up here, um, on the when you do it on the mobile app, you can actually kind of select. You can crop the image to really select just the text here, and it seemed to work better with that. So, anyways, it's not perfect yet by any means, but I just wanted to show that because if this did work well, you could potentially use Excel to like solve this entire problem. Like, like the national park staff could just take pictures on their phones of the license plates with the Excel app and analyze it and then know immediately if the person can come into the park or not. Um, I don't, I, and I honestly don't know how they implemented these rules in the park. I know there was a lot of people out there looking at plates as we were coming into the park. I didn't see them taking pictures or anything like that. Um, and there might be legal issues around that too. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I think they were just kind of trying to figure out, you know, it's, it's relatively easy, but once you have personalized plates, it does get, you have to spend a few extra seconds probably to figure it out. So it's a little slow to get in the park, but <laughs> they were doing their best. Um, I feel for them. So anyways, yeah. And Gene said this, it's like an OCR, um, never perfect. Yeah. OCR is optimal op um, character recognition, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Optical character recognition. Yeah. So yeah, never perfect. I know the yeah, they've been, that software has been around forever and it's just never perfect. Um, but it's cool that it's there and it probably work in some scenarios better than license plate pictures, of license plates, but maybe that's something, you know, Microsoft will improve at some point. All right. So moving on, who saw Oz's solution? Um, if anyone saw Oz's solution, give him some love in the chat. Uh, cause I thought it was so cool. He actually had two different solutions. So he saw the, he saw my video and then created two videos. And you can, and these are also linked, so you can go check out his video um, later today or whenever you want. Um, these these have links if you download the file. And I put I, I I'm pretty sure I put links directly to this in the description in in YouTube as well in our YouTube video. 
Um, but this was, I, um, this is a really cool solution that Oz had and it was using power query. The first one is using power query. The second one used his down and dirty solution use flash fill, which is also really cool. I won't go into that one. I'll, I'll leave that one for, for Oz to uh, explain on his video, which is also really cool, but I'll just quickly, uh, explain his, um, his technique with power query and then go watch his video also and, and check it out. Um, but essentially what he did was this strategy of uh, removing letters. And, and then there was a few others that did this as well, but essentially removing the letters out of this to just give us numbers and then determine if that's even or odd. Uh, so, oops, let me go back to Oz. So with that, I'll open up Power Query. There we go, thank you. <laughs> and really I, I won't go into too much detail on this i'll i'll just show what kind of the driver of this was and he used this function here in power query um text dot let me see if i can make this a little bit oh man oops that's weird yeah, that's interesting um text dot remove was the function that he used i'm sorry if you can't see that too well uh, and essentially, he's passing through this string of letters. So if you reference a string like this with A at the start, Z at the end, that's going to create this string of letters from A to Z. Um, so text.remove is uh, using that list and removing any matches that it finds from A to Z. Um, so what that gives you, as you can see here, is this column of just numbers. And then really just determine if these are even or odd. And there's actually a... Um, a button for that in Power Query. So with this column here, oh, you have to um, replace any nulls, what I did there, and then change the data type to a number. And then when you do that, um, there's this under the add column, or even under the transform tab, add column or transform information is even is odd. Well, when you run that, it's just gonna convert this to true or false values. So there's really the solution. And then they just have a conditional column for, um, evaluating if that's, uh, if the is odd column equals true, then return odd, if not return even. Um, so that, yeah, so it's basically that there's other variations of that. Um, but that's, the, and his Oz's might have been a slightly little different because he added uh, some dashes and spaces into the plate numbers, which is definitely makes it more realistic too. I didn't have any dashes or, or spaces in the plate numbers, but um, so he cleaned up that data as well. So yeah, check out Oz's solutions. Uh, I thought they were very, very good. And just different, way, again, different ways to think about this problem. There's no like one perfect solution or the, you know, there's no one solution that necessarily beats them all. They might all have their pros and cons. We will look at probably what was the shortest formula, which I thought was pretty cool too. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, but yeah, it doesn't like matter how you solved it. If you got the right answers, that's the most important thing. Of course, there's gonna be more efficient ways to do it and things like that. Um, but that's also what I wanted to share, like starting out, like my solution was not necessarily the most efficient. It didn't use the least amount of functions, but it got the job done. And, you know, probably if I had spent a lot of time on it, I could have reduced down the number of functions. I know some of some uh people that posted this had much shorter more efficient functions than i did and that they might have just come up with them out of the gate or they might have used uh you know kind of this method of what i like to do is just like get it done <laughs> the down and dirty way as oz would say and then um from there kind of try and figure out ways to make it more efficient if it's warranted like if the time warrants it um, to do so. But I think another thing to kind of think about is now, like after going through this training today, you're going to learn a lot of different techniques that you might use in the future. Like I definitely have learned some that I can use in the future to make formulas more efficient. So I think that's, it's cool to see this as well. And that's why I wanted to share it with you and come on here live. If you have questions and things like that, happy to, um, happy to answer those. Uh, and let's see, education zero one said, uh, question is not show the on off toggle icon button. Um, toggle on off, on and off toggle icon. But I'm not sure what you're referring to. If you could follow up with that question, where the toggle on off is that you're referring to um, in Excel. Sorry if I missed that or, or a little bit earlier. And then 
Uh, and then Gre Greg said, um, UK license plate pictures and reading for parking charges is normal, but their plates are much more standardized and larger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably have systems for that. And I'm sure we do. I know we have systems for that here as well, like in parking garages and stuff. Um, I know when I've gone to airport parking lots, like they're definitely reading the plates when you enter or exit and stuff like that. Yeah. So of course there's systems. Um, Maybe someday the read from picture in Excel will be good enough to for it to be a system, an all-in-one system for this. Um, it, you know, it's probably not something you want to like definitely use Excel for, but it's kind of cool that it's like, you know, Excel is that jack of all trades where you just can use it for just about anything. And this um, kind of further proves that point. So, all right. So let's move on to some other community solutions. Um, Let's see, Vipool had a good one here, and it was very similar to the one I just showed, so I won't go into every single uh, detail of it. Uh, but what he did was just add a nine to the front of the license plate number. And there, that therefore, if the plate didn't contain any numbers, because there were cases, I think down at the bottom of the list here, we had some, some plate numbers that didn't have any numbers in them. And then so you'd have to, hand like the lookup function is going to return an error in that case and you have to handle the error um, if it does return an error it doesn't find any numbers then you return an odd in this case the, the rules were that if you didn't have any numbers in your play you come in on an odd day so with by pool solution he just used put a nine in front of the plate so it definitely had an odd number there um, and therefore didn't have to use if error or some other if statement there to determine if it was odd if there's no numbers in that. So that's kind of a cool way that's concatenated. I don't know if you can see it there. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Oops. Why are we not doing it? <laughs> okay, I'll try that. I don't know what happened to my, I don't know what happened. Okay, um, so anyways, there's a nine in front. Here, let me move this down. It's a little easier to see. There's a nine in front. So concatenator join I meant was the ampersand there. So taking the, uh, the the A5, which is license plate number, just putting a nine in front of all of them. So therefore, if they're, like I said, if it's all text, just add a nine there. And that way there will be a number in it. It'll be odd. Um, and then the rest is kind of the same. Use as even, I use it as odd, but small nuances, but another great way to do it. So that simplified the formula a bit. Uh, Jason Weber, let me, what happened? There we go. Did I, oh, I, I, <laughs> Someone's screaming at the the uh, thing. Did I have? Oh no, I closed Power Query window. There we go. Huh? I don't know what happened. Okay. Uh, Jason Weber. Jason is a competitor in the uh, Financial Modeling World Cup. He was in the uh, one of the uh, college level, the university level series that I uh, commentated on a few months back. Uh, great to see him participating here. And he used the let function. So let's another new function uh, in Excel. I lost my... Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, and so let's another new function. Let me just kind of move this out of the way, get it prepared. Uh, and so a similar technique here, I would say, well, somewhat similar. He used xlookup instead of uh, lookup. And then he's he's using the mid function up here to return the uh, results of the, like the split, I'll just call it the split of the uh, license plate into individual numbers into that array. He's using, storing that in the string function, this string, not function, I'm sorry, string variable. So let allows you to create variables and then calculations to store either a number or an array in the variable and then use that variable throughout the rest of the formula. Uh, so this is the calculation or the formula is uh, all of this text right here. And you can see he references string that array uh, multiple times. It's uh, referenced here a few times. So determining if that's a number using XLOOKUP to determine if essentially if the values in the string, if they're a number, it's going to return a true. If not, it's going to return a false. And um, and then 
uh, using XLOOKUP to find the last true. So negative one here is a search method. It's going to search last to first. So it's going to go reverse order. Uh, we have a string of um, trues and falses. It's going to find the first true there. And then if that, oops, um, if that number is odd, it's going to essentially do the same uh, is odd. And then the, the affair around that for um, odd or even. Yeah. Or if it's going to return the true and then, uh, yeah, if it's true, it's going to return odd. If false, it's going to return even. So yeah, another great technique there using let. Uh, and again, the, the advantage there of let is that uh, in this case, you wouldn't have to do this calculation twice. Uh, this calculation here, you wouldn't have to do that twice. Uh, you just do it once, um, store it in the variable, and then you pass the variable through. So again, just kind of a different way to think about it, which I thought was really cool. Um, another different way to think about it. Okay, what the heck is going on? <laughs> is uh, my Excel is freezing on me. It's not really freezing though. It's kind of weird. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. What is going on? Okay, but we'll just keep rolling. Okay, so Jeff Lenning, my friend Jeff, my good friend Jeff had another great uh, solution here. And this was a different kind of solution too. Still using, I would say, the search technique as we looked at, or the strategy, we kind of looked at the very beginning, either search or remove. This again is more of this search technique, uh, but a different technique using, I, oh, maybe, let me just try this. Maybe that's getting in the way, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that was just getting in the way. Uh, this so Jeff's technique is using the search function, and you can see his formula here. Let me let me bring it up because this is a cool uh, formula too. So Jeff's technique is using the search function, and it's looking for he he has a list of numbers here, uh, essentially one through or zero through nine, uh, list of numbers there, and looking through again the sequence. So again, the sequence is of uh, the uh, the sequence of how many numbers you have, the length of the plate number, and essentially looking for the numbers. So doing a search, the search is going, it's kind of similar to look up, but it's going to search for all those numbers in the uh, list here, and then find uh, the, the position, <laughs> the position of those numbers, and find the the last one. So using the max function, it's going to find the last position. Uh, in this case, it would be a six because the, the number, uh, this is the last digit is a six. So it's going to, max is going to return a six and then use the mid function outside of that to return the six character in the string and then do the processing for is odd. Another way, if you're looking at these and you're kind of going through these and trying to dissect them, another thing you can do, I should have mentioned this earlier, so on the formulas tab, you can open up uh, the evaluate formula window. And it's right over here. There's a button. I, I always remember the keyboard shortcut on Windows is Alt T U F. It's just one that's ingrained in memory. It's not an easy shortcut by any means, but Alt T U F will get you there as well. Um, and then with the evaluate formula window, you can step through this. I think we have a video on this. I should have posted this in the, in the description as well on the evaluate formula window. But essentially, you can hit the space bar here or the evaluate button to evaluate through the function or the formula and all the functions within it. So the underlined uh, care, the underlined, yeah, argument here is what's being evaluated right now. Um, so you can kind of just hit space bar. Like I won't go through and explain every single one of these. But essentially here, uh, the search function is just returning. You can see one, two, three, four, five and sixes that and then a bunch of values where there is um text so one one two three and six because the fourth character is a letter so it doesn't find it there so then we get all this this string or this array of one two three and fives and then the max or i'm sorry one two three five six and the max is six that's passed through to the mid which gives us a seven and then we evaluate if seven is odd and again i apologize if that's too small for you to see um you might want to hit the full screen button or something, but yeah, another cool way to go about it. So I love that technique from, from Jeff as well. So thank you, Jeff. Um, 
Cool. All right, next, uh, Bill. Bill's solution was also really cool. This was probably one of the shortest ones. Uh, I think, um, yeah, probably one of the shortest ones. Still using similar technique with mid. Um, and in adding, here, let me make this bigger. Um, okay, let's get that over here. Oh, I'm wondering if there's some keyboard shortcut uh, con conflict. I'll have to figure that one out. Um, so, so this technique, a few things with this one. Here, let me move Bill's picture out of the way real quick. Where's comment? A uh, few things with this technique. This one's going to work on all versions of Excel because we're not using the sequence function here. Uh, instead, we're using the row function. And so what Bill has is row one through 10. Uh, if you're on an older version of Excel, you would enter this as a control shift enter array formula. If you're on a modern version of Excel, you don't need to do that. But essentially this is going to create a sequence of numbers one through 10. That's what the row function is doing because it's passing through, the argument it's passing through is rows one through 10. So that's just gonna give you, return the row number for each of those rows, gives you a sequence of one through 10. So that's a technique um, you saw in the in the previous one, Jeff had uh, an, the numbers in an array here, and that's essentially what row is going to do as well. Uh, just give you those numbers in an array, um, and then so and then basically it has that um, for the mid function. So still splitting out, still kind of using the split technique, uh, or this I should say the search technique that we talked about, the search strategy. Uh, still using that here with mid and he's put a one in front of it so if i pull put a nine in front they'll put a one in front uh still going to be an odd number at the front of the license plate in case the license plate number doesn't have any numbers in it um but then what where bills differs really is the mod function so this mod function let me get into it here we have the number so essentially the um the mid function is going to return the single digit, the number. And this, and if you're wondering what this two minus signs is in front of mid, that's equivalent to like using the value function. So originally I used the value function to convert the number to, or the text to a value, to a number. You could also put this double negative here. If you've used some product in the past, I would say that's where I would have originally seen this technique for double negatives is the arguments in some product, also converting those uh, values to numbers but you can use that um, here as well. So instead of values, it just has double negative. And that's just essentially multiplying it by negative one twice um, to get you a positive number kind of thing. So that's how that works. Um, and then, so anyways, mod, so we have the number returned a sequence of numbers, um, which in this case would be one, two, three, five, seven. And then the divisor is two. So he's taking each of those numbers and dividing them um, by two. And let me see if I can open, um, so maybe make this a little bit easier to see. So I'm just going through the evaluate formula window. So you can see these are, um, gives us a string of ones and zeros and values, um, where there's a, um, letter, right? So one zeros values. Uh, where there's a letter and he had, there's 10 here because this was rows one through 10. So there's a few extra at the end. Um, but you can see, at, at, hopefully you can see at the end of this uh, is a one. So what he's doing is using the lookup value of two to try and find a two. And this is never going to find a two because we have essentially true false values for, uh, or ones and zeros, I should say, not true false, ones and zeros. Find the last one in that. And then uh, if that, that will be an odd um, because it's one and therefore so he doesn't have to have is odd in here either um, so that if it's a zero it'll uh, return a false which would return an even if it's a one it'll return true which is odd which is an if function for that so that pretty nifty formula i would say and you can spend time like i said look kind of looking through that and um and seeing how that one works but that was pretty cool. I, I think that one's really unique. I would say I didn't see any others like that. So yeah, if any uh, 
questions, of course, throw those in the chat. Uh, Rick Rothstein had another pretty cool one as well. And again, this one's going to work on any version of Excel. Let me zoom in here. Um, and also short function, still using the kind of the search method there, I would say. Um, and the, the cool part with this one is it's just, again, not using the, uh, well, this one is using is odd. So I guess this one is probably like, actually, there was a few that had this similar technique. I don't know if they were all this short, but similar technique here. And this one, instead of using sequence, is using the row function, uh, row one through nine, to again, return that sequence of numbers there. And then using mid, at putting one in front, using mid, and then um, adding zero to convert that to a number. So that's another way. That, that's the other thing I want to show with this one. Another way to convert to a number. We saw uh, Bill with the double negative in front. Uh, a lot of people, including myself, use the value function. Um, and then uh, Rick is just adding zero to the number to turn it into a number. Or to, to turn the, yeah, to turn the, the, where it is a number to turn that into a number. And this says same lookup with 10 there. And then is odd. So yeah, nice, short, concise, well, relatively short formula uh, to solve this challenge, I would say. All right, cool. Let me go on to a few more. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm um, grab some water here. Oh yeah, something's fun. So uh, Excel Lambda uh, gave us a, quite a few different uh, solutions, which was great to see. And I'm just gonna mention a few of them. I'll mention them relatively quickly here, um, but they're some great, great solutions. I think the first one was this one here using recursive lambda. So what is a recursive lambda? So essentially, if you just look at the formula in this cell here, you'd be like, wow, it's just like a some kind of uh, custom function uh, that is feeding in the plate number and um, giving us even or odd. And that's exactly what it is. That's what a lambda does, it allows us to create custom functions. You might think of UDFs and VBA. Um, but these, this new Lambda feature allows us to create those. So here's what the Lambda looks like. Let me zoom in. And I have it in the cell here. Uh, so this is, again, if you're seeing these for the first time, let me make it just a little bit bigger. Um, this is going to look overwhelming. <laughs> uh, and this, but this solution is cool because essentially uh, I'll do my best to explain it. Um, but he's using or they are using recursion uh, to essentially pass the function back or call the function again within itself for each character in the string. Uh, so the the um, so let me work kind of <laughs> got to kind of work backwards in this one, but also the, there's a let at the beginning of this that is setting up the variables. So, and I probably would have re honestly renamed these variables to make them a little more descriptive, but n is going to be the length of the license plate. X is going to be the uh, last character of the license plate number. Um, and then you see the double negative there again to convert that to a number. So write would return, the write function returns text. We need to convert that to a number, double negative or value or plus zero. Um, as we saw, all do that, all can do that. Uh, so that's those are the two really the two functions um I'm, I'm sorry the two variables that are set up at the beginning that are then used in the calculation so kind of the rest of this um i guess it's this here is the calculation and this calculation is then saying if the length is equal to zero then it's going to be odd uh, because in that case there would be only letters no numbers um otherwise if the or is that right? No, that's just reducing down to, uh, yeah, I guess that, that technically would be that. But basically saying if X is an error, and again, that's the right of, um, if this is an error, so if the right side of that double negative turns it into a number, if that's an error, then it means it's a letter. So we're, um, if, if that's a letter, then we're going to return the left of, um, the we're going to call this again and go left uh, to the next essentially the next character 
in the length because we're taking n minus one. So originally n minus one started out, or I'm sorry, n started as six and then n minus one is five. And we're just taking the first character in that string um, and evaluating that. And so it does that over and over for each character until it finds um, the number is what's happening and then determines if that's odd or even and returns the value. So just kind of a different way to approach it. Still kind of using, if we go back to our strategies here, um, still really using this search technique. It's just doing like a formula on each character in there to determine if it's in text, odd or even number. Um, and, and working backwards too. That's the other point I should make, so working backwards. So find C, that's gonna be um, an error. It's gonna move on to find nine and that's gonna be an, an odd number um, and work from there. Yeah, so I might I hope I explained that correctly. <laughs> um, that's a challenging one to kind of step through, but it's cool, cool solution with Lambda and Let. Definitely some advanced stuff there. Uh, the other one that Excel Lambda had was um, just this Let function. And really, this was more of the remove technique. And I know I saw questions around this too. I don't know if I captured them here. In this case, he's using the reduce function um, and and really taking the character function. Here, let me make it easier to see. If, sorry about that. Um, the character function is going to return, in this case, it's passing through a sequence of um, the sequence 26 to 65. That's A through Z. That's a string of the character function. If you do character uh, 26, oops. Well, wait a second. There's no characters. Oh, yes. Yeah. Starting. Yes. That's right. 66. I'm sorry. Uh, starting at 20. Um, yeah. So 60, starting at 65 and then 26. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oops. I did 56. Starting at 65 and then 26 uh, letters or 26 numbers beyond that. If you pass that into a character, you're going to get. Um, a list of A to Z. So that's also a good technique because that can is need. If you do need a list of A to Z or a list of letters, you can use that technique too. So character 66 will give you a B. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another way to go about it. And then so this one is really kind of using the, if we go back here, I'll just quickly go back. This strategy is kind of more of this remove technique. So looking for the letters and removing, in this case, using the reduce function to reduce down or remove the letters um out of that and then just uh, resulting in the numbers uh, being left that's essentially what's happening kind of at a high level i would say um but yeah that's a, just another kind of interesting <laughs> interesting very interesting way to go about it and then the third one was what's this one oh yeah this one is just using oh sorry make it bigger again should that instead ahead of time um, this one's just using text split to split again, that sequence of characters. I, I thought this one was pretty interesting too. Um, so we can also step through this one easier way to see it. So still adding one to the front of the license plate to make sure it's going to be a, an odd if it's all text. Then we have all these characters, which again, gives give us a list of all the A through Z and then, uh, finding, oops, did I go? Wait, let me go back. Yeah, so so splitting, essentially uh, taking those characters, splitting out based on what it finds. So it found M here as, um, as a delimiter. So it's using uh, like A through Z as delimiters for text split. Text split's another new function, a uh, very new function. And I have a video on that as well. Uh, but it's just taking all those letters as delimiters to text split and splitting that out. So what is remaining is what's uh, the two values for um, text split. In this case, it's really evaluating those, joining them back together. So that's a way to remove the letters is to join. Now that we have a list of, in this case, two numbers, puts them back together and gives us this one number without letters in it and then evaluates if that's even or odd. So I thought that was a really cool one too. It's kind of a way to remove 
um, remove those values there. The text, I'm sorry, the letter values. <laughs> remove the letters <laughs> and just give us numbers. Uh, so again, that one, Excel Lambda 3 is going to be more of this strategy of removing, removing letters. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. And then, yeah, so I'll just finish up with a, a few others. Um, Stein had one on uh, using the code function. So it's kind of opposite um, of mid. It's a definitely longer uh, formula, but using let and the code function here. So let me get and make that bigger. Uh, use, taking the plate number, taking the, using the uh, upper function here uh, to convert, I guess, all those to uh, any lowercase values to upper case values, um, and then using the code function there instead of uh, character. So, so I guess doing the reverse of, so if we step through this, maybe I'll make it easier to explain. Um, doing the reverse of, so we have these, all these characters here, and then the code function would give us kind of the opposite of what the character function gives us and then filtering out anything that's less than 65. So anything less, so A starts at 65 using the character function, anything less than that is being filtered out and that would be a number. So it's, it's essentially doing the same kind of remove technique, but removing, um, removing the uh, text instead of numbers, giving us just those numbers. Let me go through this. See if we can get down to the end here. Yeah, and then doing the is even or is odd on really the numbers only. Yeah, it's another great technique. Um, Abbott had a similar one just using take instead of, um, well, using, yeah, take is another new function, dynamic array function. It's going to allow you to just take, uh, take uh, the last row in the, in the array, I should say. So still using the array, um, but instead of lookup or something like that, just taking the uh, last row in the array with take. Yeah, that's another cool one to check out too. Yeah. And then I also had, or I wanted to share, I should say. Yeah, and if any questions on those, just feel free to throw them in the chat. I know it's a lot, <laughs> but hopefully it's a good learning experience to just kind of go through some of these and understand um, what each of these does. And, and of course you can dive into them in more detail and kind of hopefully learn from, from those as well. So um, there we go. So we had a few VBA solutions come in too, which I thought was cool. Um, one from Paulina was, this was just more of a, a macro to essentially loop through uh, all the numbers in the list there. And then also loop through the, the plates, each plate, um, in uh, backwards. So you're taking the length of the plate and when you do step negative one, this is a, a loop in reverse, essentially is what's happening here. So going from the last plate, or I'm sorry, the last digit in the plate number to the first one, and then um, pulling that out with the mid function. So still like using really some similar uh, Excel functions here in VBA. Um, and then doing an if, using the mod function again there, and then uh, determining if that's um, even or odd. So yeah, pretty cool uh, macro there too. And then the other one I wanted to show, I won't, oh yeah, this one was Phil's and Phil created a UDF or uh, user defined function. And in this case here, if we jump back into this one here and I put the, uh, the link to this separate file um, in the description below as well. Uh, here, so what uh, Phil has is one function that's going to extract only the numbers. So again, this is the uh, removal technique, we can call it, or extraction technique. Uh, and that's just going to give us a list of or the number, not a list, but the numbers joined together. And then, um, and then another function to really determine if that's even or odd. So two separate functions there. This function actually calls this function here so you don't have to have them separately i just wanted to show them separately in case you might want to have a formula that just strips out letters that's you know this is a vba technique for that but we saw some other techniques 
using take and reduce and filter to do that as well. Uh, and Power Query with Oz's solution with Power Query. So a few different ways to do that. If you, for some reason, you just need to remove letters from a string of uh, text and numbers, you can do that and then uh, have that there and then determine if that's even or odd in a separate function if needed. Yeah. Yeah. So great. Uh, a lot of, a ton of uh, different ways to solve this problem, which I really love. Uh, just seeing all the different techniques here. And if you posted a technique and it was um, similar to one of these, I'm sorry if I didn't show yours on here. I just picked a few um, based on kind of the just the most popular solutions. So there's a lot of solutions that were similar to these with some small nuances, um, which is cool to see as well. Because uh, like I said, there's no one perfect solution. We saw some short solutions. We saw some longer solutions. So I'm using Lambda and Let and all these new functions and techniques. But if you're on an older version of Excel, we saw like Rick's, fun Rick's formula can, can work on any version of Excel. Uh, same with Jeff's, and Bill's and Jeff's. Those could all work on, oh no, I'm sorry, Jeff's used sequence. Bill's and Rick's could all work on older versions of Excel. So check those ones out um, as well. Yeah, if you're on an older version of Excel. So cool to see the fun new stuff, but you can solve this with the older version of Excel too. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up if there aren't any more questions or anything. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It, like I said, you can download the files in the description below. There's also links down there. Uh, we have a free training webinar if you want to learn about Power Query and some of these new features of Excel. We have a free training webinar called the Modern Excel Blueprint that goes through uh, those new tools, techniques, how to use them together, uh, why you don't have to learn every single one of them, <laughs> which can be a cause of overwhelm. Uh, so check that out as well. That's at excelcampus.com slash webinar. And there's a link below um, to that as well. Yeah. So thanks again, everybody, for sharing. And thanks for participating in this challenge. Uh, I loved it. And I hope you did too. And I hope, hope you learned something new. And just you know, let us know if you enjoy these and, and want more in the future. We like, love to do them, but we're here for you. So I want to make sure you're learning from these things like that too. So thanks again. Uh, thanks for joining me on a Friday. Have a great weekend and we'll talk soon. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Gene. Uh, I see some, some, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Awesome. Thu, thank you so much. All right. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye.